All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, or Chachurash, the honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. Peace, ble uh, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Wa, Akwatim, learning and teaching and truth and sincerity. And this is going to be another video through the Spirit. All right, this is going to be a shorter one. Just uh, doing some reading. Came across uh, a couple scriptures and I wanted to, you know, make a video on it. Uh, the basis, as you can see, trust your gut. All right, and you know, we have this truth now, so we don't trust our gut, but what we trust is the spirit. In other words, trust the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, that certain things are going down, you know, certain things may go down in your life, and you may be getting this, this irksome notion in your mind, your body, and spirit to either do something or not to do something, and more than likely, it is the Heavenly Father warning you. All right, because there are many different, and we're going to get this example, we'll get some scriptures. The Heavenly Father doesn't have to directly, you know, come visit you, all right, especially dealing with the prophets. The prophets can receive notions through the Spirit, all right, to where it can be something that is going to affect your life or be something that is going to affect somebody else's life. That's the level that the prophets, you know, the holy men, the righteous men get dealt with, all right. So let's get this example out of Second Kings I believe it is chapter 6 and verse 18. All right, let's get this real quick. Because you had uh, the king of Syria. All right, let's see. Right here. All right, no, not, not right here. Not right here. Let me come down. Let me come down. Uh, is it here or is it chapter 7? Salaka, y'all. Right here. Bam. You know. Um, so... Basically, you had the king of Syria. He was coming up to make war with the king of Israel. And watch what happened. Second Kings 6 and 9, it says, And the man of Yahweh sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the men of Yahweh told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor, nor twice. So the king of Syria had set up a trap against the king of Israel. All right. And the, the Heavenly Father, he warned Elijah to tell the uh, king of Israel, hey, you know, get your, don't have your men over there. Otherwise, the Syrians are going to kill you. So the king of Syria, this is what he said. Verse 11, therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So the king of Syria, he said, damn, he said, which one of you mother... Which one of you sons of guns is out here snitching, all right? <laughs> Who's the double agent among the camp? Who's out here relaying information, all right? And that's what you would naturally think, all right? When you have a, something going down in your life, you may try to think of a natural explanation, but it may be a supernatural one, all right? Verse 12, and one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber, all right? So the heavenly father was relaying the very thoughts, the very words that um, the king of Syria was uh, using. You know, his, his very thoughts and his words, the heavenly father was making sure that Elisha found them out so that he could pass them to the message, uh, pass them to the king of Israel to save his men. All right. And that's the basically discernment. This is something that the heavenly father gives uh, I'll say exclusively to his prophets and to the righteous. He gives us discernment, y'all. He allows us to know what's going on, whether you fully understand it or not. All right, say for instance, you know, you and brothers, you may be planning to go out to eat somewhere, you know, and then the spirit just hop, you know, somebody's like, somebody, one brother's like, man, you know what, brothers, man, you know what, brothers, man, no, I'm not feeling that spot tonight. Let's, let's go, let's go, let's go somewhere else. Hey, the brother, he might not be able to explain why, he may not know why, he, hey, but he's like, man, you know, y'all, let's go somewhere else. And then lo and behold, you look in the news and that spot that y'all originally was going to go to end up uh, damn being a shootout, you know, all, all types of things like that. Matter of fact, let's get this. Uh, let's get this out of uh, Amos. Hey, this is one of the benefits of doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's not going to leave us assed out, as they say. He's going to make sure that we're walking uh, proper steps, that we're being kept. All right, Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And that was a, a, a right answer, you know, or, or uh, sorry, that was a live action testimony in that second Kings. 
he made sure that Alicia knew what was going on. So hell, even Alicia himself didn't get caught up because had the Syrian king caught uh, the king of Israel right there, he would have came and killed him and came and ran. And you best believe he would have came in and started stomping over all the Israelites. So ultimately, that was a hey, it was keeping Alicia's behind covered as well and that's a hey, you got a role in the spirit like that sometimes you know you may be thinking of doing something right hey you you literally may be thinking of going somewhere and a brother calls you up hey bro you want to come hang out with me for a minute you like man you like man yeah why not you know then come to find out the place that you were gonna go some uh catastrophic catastrophic event occurred all right i remember being a child you know this was in my early years all right i was up to no good uh, start was that song, the Wilson and Songs. Up to no good. Started making trouble in the neighborhood. <laughs> All right, I was actually out on some bullshit. I'll say, <clears throat> at a Walmart store, me and my friends, we wasn't up to no good. We was up to uh, 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 illegal activities. All right. Now I was a child. I was uh, I was under ten, and my grandmother had called me out of nowhere. She was like, uh, "Hey, I'm coming to pick you up." You know, and I started panicking. I was like, "What?" You know, because I told her that. I was uh, actually at my friend's house with me, my friend, and a third friend. We were actually out at Walmart up to no good. You know, so I panic. I go full-blown panic mode, and I run home to her. And, you know, hey, this was probably one of the fastest. This is probably one of the second fastest times I ever ran in my life. I remember I was running so fast, I looked down at my feet, and I, all, I saw was, uh, all I saw was movement. You know, I couldn't even clearly make out my legs because <laughs> I, I wanted to hurry up and get home so I didn't get in trouble. You know, and I get home. And she didn't even start the car yet. She was still sitting on the couch watching TV. All right. So I'm like, fuck it. You know, so I, I go to sleep, come to find out. I, you know, get in contact with my friends and they ended up getting arrested. You know, they ended up getting arrested for their the the no good that they were doing at Walmart. They ended up getting arrested that night uh, and I got spared from it. You know, the people actually arrested them. They were actually looking for me, you know, because they had my stupid ass. <laughs> You know, because my stupid ass was there, but, you know, hey, my friends didn't snitch on me, you know, so, hey, but just, I just wanted to pull in this scripture, the Lord reveals these things to us, directly and indirectly, matter of fact, uh, let's get this, you know, because, hey, the Heavenly Father, He deals with us whether we directly perceive it or not, Job 33 or 14, it says, for Yahweh speaketh once, yet twice, Yet man perceiveth it not. Con, and what are some of the ways that the Heavenly Father speaks to us? He may have a person say something to you. You may just get a feeling in your gut. Like we started off with that picture in the beginning. You may, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. What did I say? Someone may talk to you. Uh, oh, a brother may contact you or persuade you to do something and change your mind. Or you could receive a dream about something, which is what the next ver verses go on to uh display all right as a matter of fact i remember you know once again as a child uh a kid you know he ended up becoming my best friend but before the first time we ever hung out i remember the i'm I, hey you know hey you know we can't swear on none but if i would i could i remember the night before the very first time i was supposed to go over to his house i had a dream of the layout of his house and that dream i had the dream was point for point accurate except for one thing in his house but I, I i literally had a dream of where the paintings were at you know the kitchen the layout of the kitchen his mother's room his room the upstairs the downstairs the only thing that was missing was a purple cur in my dream there was a purple curtain in front of his mom's room instead of a door and that was the only difference in real life i literally went into his house and was literally i was comfortable i knew where everything was at he didn't have to show me around he was like bro you know what the hell I was like, man, I had a dream last night about your house. You know, hey, so these are ways that the Heavenly Father deals with us. All right. And this was back. I was in second grade, you know, didn't know anything about the truth yet. Hey, you know, hey, believe it or not, you know, shit, you know, hey, <laughs> man, when you look back on your life, y'all, certain things, the Lord was dealing with us since we were fucking kids, man. Certain things that happen, you know, we can't make this shit up. All right. And let me, let me get one more and I'll close it off right here ecclesiastes 10 and 20 it says curse not the king no not in thy thought and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber for a bird of the air shall carry the voice and that which hath wings shall tell the matter con so also be worried of your thoughts and your words because 
how you feel and the words that you say, that energy can get passed around. All right, say for instance, man, hey, you'll know, hey, look, you have somebody in the camp not doing right, bro. The heavenly Father will just put it in another brother's spirit to be like, man, what's so and so up to? And we've had that happen. Some of you know, hey, dudes that's not in this camp no more. You know, you, shit, man. You get the thought, you like, man, something not right with this dude, man. Some this some, this brother's on something. And then lo and behold, it gets revealed that a brother was doing some short sort of shadiness or or craftiness. All right, and amongst this brotherhood, if you and the you know brother go somewhere, man, at man. Man, you know, or you, <laughs> man, the apostles. Hey, that's gonna be found out. All right, we have to rebuke. Uh, now you know there's uh, advising and taking care and watching over each other, but just straight up unrighteous, wicked, niggerly, uncalled for thoughts. You have to be careful that and mindful that, and also your words. You can't just be saying some shit just because you feel like it. You know, just because you didn't. You know, you off the wine a little bit. You know, you have to try to be mindful and careful of the things that you say. Because the angel, uh, yeah, the angel, you know, the angels of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, they can put it in a brother's spirit to become privy of a situation. All right. You know, so that's that's about it. Just a real quick video. Uh, I read that scripture in Second Kings, so I wanted to touch on it. You know, hey, hey, this is, and these are things of the spirit that scoffers like vocab and other people that they'll never be able to understand. This is how these are indirect ways, because the angels, they don't, you know, this isn't the ancient world as of right now. They're not physically coming down and manifesting themselves before us, Yahweh by Shem Shai is dealing with us in very subtle and unique ways, all right, but he's dealing with us nonetheless, all right, so I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechach Rosh, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Wa, Akwathim, learning, teaching, and truth, and sincerity, I'm going to say Shalom.